Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Thanks, Jason. Um, I do have a call, so excuse my voice. Um, thank you, Spiritual Cartel, for having me. It's a real honour to be here and um, to have been asked, hello, everyone who's here. Thank you so much for coming. And whoever makes this meeting happen, um, it's incredible. Um, I really appreciate you all. Um, my name is Naomi, and I am such, such a grateful, recovered, addict, alcoholic of the hopeless variety. Oh, I'm so grateful to be here. Um, I found you guys just over 14 months ago, and I crawled into these rooms completely broken with nothing else to do than give my life to you guys. I'm just going to read what the um, the 11th principle of CA is. Awareness. Through regular inventory, we remain aware of our own motives, intentions and behaviours. Now, for me, to remain aware, I had to become aware. When I walked in here, like it said at the beginning of your meeting, I had no idea that my problems were of my own making. I walked in here full of everybody was the problem. I don't know what to do, but it's definitely not me that's the problem. I just know that I can't do life anymore and I can't stop taking, drinking, anything, and it's killing me. That's what I came here with. What this process of the steps taught me was how to wake up. Because I came in here asleep. I came in here asleep to life. I came in here asleep to myself. I came in here asleep to God, to this power, to the divine. I wasn't connected to anything apart from death itself. Death itself, barely warmed up, was who I was. And my first, for me, the first level of awareness came the the last night of my using and drinking when something happened inside of me. Something happened and I woke up to how broken I was. But I woke up to the fact that I wanted to live. And I woke up to the fact that I actually realised there was nothing I could do about it anymore. I was out of ideas. I was out of resources. And you guys were my last hope. And when I came in here, an amazing woman took me through the book and took me through the steps. And I woke up to the fact that I'm the problem. My perception of life, my perception of myself, my perception of reality isn't real. I wasn't even living in any form of reality. Something happened to me. I became aware of my motives of my selfishness and self-centeredness and my fears that drove me to behave in a way that always hurt other people, was killing me, was nearly at some point going to kill my son and I'd probably end up killing someone else's child along the way. (laughs) And we were all God's children, now I understand that, while I was running around killing everybody. And I became aware of how I showed up in life. I became aware to the fact that I wasn't aware. And that blew my head off. I thought I was aware. I had moral convictions galore. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about anything. Never mind this power that created the universe. That has kept me alive. That has kept you all alive. And I just want to take a moment right now and I invite you just to acknowledge the fact that you have a heartbeat right now. That blows my mind because if you're anything like me, the fact that we are alive right now 
with each other in this moment and how the solution to live is incredible. That is incredible. How lucky are we? I am so grateful that I found you. But you know what? I didn't find anything. God brought me here. God brought me here. Something brought me here. I could not for one instance believe that this life for any of us was meant to be where we just drink and use to death again. I don't believe that. How can I possibly believe that all of our beautiful little souls were created to just die in pain? We've all got a purpose. I know that in my being, I have a purpose. I walk up to that purpose. Trust God, clean house, help others. That's my purpose. The process of these steps opened my eyes to the fact that I have no power and no control over myself, over life. And do you know what? I don't want it. I don't want it. Because when I'm in charge, it's a disaster. But what's happened is immensely more beautiful. This process of seeing the truth and then connecting to something that's way bigger than me is way bigger than I could ever have imagined. And in every moment of every day, by practicing the principles of these steps, Every single moment of every single day, I can be free. And that's the choice. I can choose to turn my life to this program every moment of every day. That bit's not easy for me because I don't do it every single moment of every day because I'm still an addict. But I have an amazing toolkit now of being able to choose whether I turn my life and my will over to something that has way better plans for me and for you than I could ever imagine. The rest of the principle tells us that through prayer and meditation, we strive to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, as we continuously seek spiritual growth our awareness also grows prayer and meditation is the juice of my life without a contact with power i will die i am nothing the drug problem and the alcohol problem for me has been removed as it promises in the book that's gone what i'm left with is how i show up in life The insanity of turning to something that kills me has gone. The sanity is now I know I can't do that because that will kill me. What I'm with now is, ooh, I feel uncomfortable in this moment. What am I doing wrong? Ooh, God help me. God help me how to help this person. God mold me. God use me. This life isn't mine anymore. This this life that I've been given, the very purpose of my existence is to serve all of God's children. As whoever is put in my path, first comes my kids, who I'm lucky to have still in my life, my family, and whoever I step foot out the door and meet, whoever phones my phone, Whichever addict, alcoholic needs my help. And isn't it amazing? Any time, this is in my experience, any time I start to think, I start to think, basically, and I'm in a bit of a twinge, someone phones me needing help. God goes, here you go. Thank you. Every single time. Every single time I'm a little bit unsure and the book tells me, pause, when, ad- when, when agitated or doubtful, I'm often doubtful. I'm also exhausted because I have a five-month-old baby. So I'm often doubtful because I can't quite sometimes see it clearly. So I'm often living in a pause. When I don't know, 
And I'm trying to figure out, oh, that gets a bit tricky for me. I don't try to figure out anything. I just stop and I just wait. And do you know what happens? The answers always come. This intuitive thought that the book talks about, it becomes reality. I don't know where the answers to life come from. I don't know how to live life. Life is lived for me by this power. I just go, what now? Okay, then. The more I do that, and the more I sit with hands open, palms up, heart wide, everything is provided, every person is provided, every situation is provided that I need, not always what I want. I don't know what I want or what is good for me. Only this almighty power knows what is good for me. What is good in terms of moulding me into a more kind human being, a more loving human being, a more patient human being, a more compassionate human being. I need situations that God provides for me to be moulded and to learn and to see what that looks like. I don't always know myself how to be a good mom, how to be a good partner, how to be a good sponsor, how could, how to be a good daughter, I don't know. But when I sit and when I listen and I connect, I get shown, I get moved, I get moved in ways that I couldn't think of myself. I'm not in the business of trying to think and figure out life because every time I try and do that, I get it wrong. So why would I want to? I don't want to. Sometimes I forget. That's why I have this program, Prayer Meditation. When I first started in this program, I had rituals, prayer rituals. There are prayers that the book gives us. Now, in this moment, this time in my in my life, in my program, I've come to understand and realise I just live in a constant prayer. I live in a constant dialogue with this power. I can be in a constant state of meditation at any moment of the day. It's just a breath. It's just a breath. I could stop and breathe and feel connected to a tree. It's magic. As soon as I breathe and get into my body and get out of my mind, there is God. Like deep within me, deep within you, it tells us. It tells us that deep within every single man, woman and child is the very idea of God. Whatever God means to you, it's bigger than you. I don't know what it is. I call it God because it's a short word for me. I can't comprehend what it is. Because I've never seen life like this before, before I got here. It blows my mind that even today, I've had the most incredible, mind-blowing experience with my mum, my poor mum, who watched, like, suffered in my in my addiction, in my using for such a long time, and my mum is really ill right now. She's really ill and she's in hospital for the third time in a few weeks. And I've just been at her bedside again and she's so scared. She's looking at me and she's crying and she thinks she's dying. I don't know if she's dying. And you know what? I'm not in the business of knowing she's dying. I'm not even in the business of wishing she doesn't die. Because you know what? I don't actually wish that. What I wish for is for whatever God's will is to be done. And that all I can do is be helpful and show up. Show up for my mum. Not need anything in return. I don't need anything from her. But I can give so much to her. And to be a person who was so full of bitterness and fear and anger and resentment all towards that one woman. To have it completely turned on its head now and be full of love and gratitude and an 
an innate in my bones feeling to want to serve her is a miracle for me. That's insane. The transformation of my existence. I came out of the hospital this evening and I cried. And it wasn't sadness. It was an unbelievable sense of feeling safe and protected and warm and held by this power that is with me always. Always, but I notice even more when I pause, when I pray, when I meditate, when I look into the eyes of someone and I really look into the eyes of someone, there is God. I don't, I don't make time. I don't need to make time to pray or meditate. I can just live it because that's my connection to God. God is everywhere at all times, in everything, in everyone. Therefore, so am I. If I'm awake, I'm rid of self by inventory. For me, the the two can't coexist easily. If I'm not doing the actions of regular inventory and me is getting in the way and clouding my judgment, it is trickier. For me to really feel what is God's will, it's trickier. Doesn't mean it's not there. I can just get in the way a little bit and get a little bit confused. The more I clean house, simply do the action of cleaning house, the more I I genuinely feel empty, empty enough to be moved, empty enough to be a vessel empty enough to be a servant, empty enough to be the employee, the employee, not the employer, absolutely not, the employee who's got a new job description. I don't even know what it is, but sometimes I get given a job and I just, yes, sir, and I go and do the job. I don't ask questions. I don't ask why. I don't ask how. I just do it. I get given a script. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, are you sure you want me to say that? I say it. Somebody else says, thank you for saying that. This is the joy when I'm out the way. When I'm out of the way, amazing things happen. My God is incredibly funny. (laughs) You know, like, God gave me a brain to use. He also gave me certain characteristics, humor being one of them. I can sometimes confuse self-centered humor, (laughs) fearful humor with other, with like my normal God-given humor. But earlier I was in, I was in a shop and someone called the clergy and I called his name and the guy who was serving me and the guy behind me had the same name and because I called his name, these two were people that I hadn't seen any for ages and they became, they were chatting and laughing about how they hadn't seen each other for ages and thanked me for calling out this guy's name and I was just moved to call his name and they found it funny but I was just moved to call his name and that wasn't me, it was God my God's funny man, like he makes jokes (laughs) but I only know this when I'm really in the moment when I'm really in the moment and I'm just empty and I'm grateful things just happen I don't understand it I can't explain it, but I genuinely have a desire to help other people. Selfish, self-centered Naomi. That's mental. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, how can I help today? I get excited about that. That's weird. (laughs) And as soon as I might... As soon as I go through my list of who I can help and I run out of the list and I'm like, what do I want? God goes, no, 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 no. He sends me a few more people. Amazing. <laughs> Very recently, I've had a deeper, an even deeper relationship with the pause, <laughs> the breath. And my God, I don't know if any of you are parents, you know, in the middle of the night, 
when your baby's screaming, when you're really sleep deprived, that's a really tricky time for an ego <laughs> and fear. It's like the juicy stuff for an alcoholic addict mind to go, oh, this is prime time for me to get inside of your brain. So I gotta go in hard. I gotta go in hard to that pause. I gotta go in hard for the prayer to help me, help me, God. I need some patience. But it's funny because when I'm asking for patience, really, sometimes what I'm asking for is for the baby to stop crying and go to sleep. That's not always what I get. Sometimes what I get is more sleepless nights because then I learn more patience. Then I learn more love. When I ask God to show me, show me how to be a better parent, I get tricky situations with my kids. I learn how to be a better parent. This power gives me situations that I would never think are the answer to what I need to show up in life better, to be a better human, to be able to contribute to this life, this existence more wholly. But I get what I need every time. And sometimes it's only in hindsight, miles down the road, that I see and I go, oh, wow, I see that now. That's why I don't need to be questioning. I don't question because I don't know. I'm not in the business of knowing. I handed my life over. I got to do that all the time because I don't know. I don't win. I always lose. God is good. May you find him now. Anyone who is struggling, you don't need to. God is everyone. God is everywhere. Sometimes we just got to. Get out the way. If anyone needs a sponsor or needs help, please take my number. I think I'm done. It's been an absolute honour and a privilege to speak to you all. God is good. I love you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.